Archaeologists from the universities of Freiburg and Mainz have identified a sacred monumental building of the Etruscans near the Tempio Grande in Volsai, Italy. The Etruscans were an ancient Italic people, considered one of the first great civilizations on the peninsula of Italy that influenced the developing Roman culture. The Etruscans emerged around 900 BC and established three confederacies of cities, until they were succeeded by the rising Roman kingdom that spread to dominate the region in the 5th and 4th century BC. An interdisciplinary team found a large, monumental building, roughly the same size and alignment as the neighboring Tempio Grande, measuring 45 meters by 35 meters and dates from the end of the 6th or beginning of the 5th century BC. The temple was first identified during a survey using geophysical prospecting and ground-penetrating radar over an area of 3.5 acres to in the northern area of Volsai. The survey is part of the Volsai Cityscape Project, which was launched in 2020 and aimed to research the settlement strategies and urbanistic structures of the city of Volsai. Volsai was one of the 12 cities of the Etruscan Federation, and in pre-Roman times was one of the most important urban centers in what is now Italy. Paul P. Pasica of the University of Mainz said, We discovered remains from the city's origins that had previously been overlooked in Volsai and are now better able to understand the dynamics of settlement and the road system, besides identifying different functional areas in the city. Our knowledge about the appearance and organization of Etruscan cities has been limited until now, says Dr. Mariacciara Franceschini of the University of Freiburg. The intact strata of the temple are offering us insights into more than a thousand years of development of one of the most important Etruscan cities. During the construction of the office building on Lutzi Street in Tallinn, Estonia's capital on the Baltic Sea, a shipwreck was found underground, exceeding the size of any wreck previously excavated here. The surprise didn't stop there, construction at Lutzi 8 began with the knowledge of a shipwreck on the property that wouldn't be affected by plan work. However, an unexpected second wreck was unearthed as well, and it may be one of the best preserved in the region. The wreck was found at the mouth of the Harjapia River. The wreck was measured to be 24.5 meters long by 9.5 meters wide, and experts hope to unearth it in as large of pieces as possible. We have another 13th century wreck on our property whose location is known, but the second one came completely unexpectedly, said EHC Lutzi representative Tarmo Mill. Ragnar Nurk, an archaeologist in Tallinn City Planning Board's Department of Heritage Conservation, said the previously known wreck was 3 to 4 meters deep, but the newly found wreckage was much closer to the ground, about 1 and a half meters deep. Although the site is 200 meters, ca 220 yards, from the water today, for centuries it was a port. In the late 1930s, the area was infilled with ash and household refuse. It's not clear if the ships sank there or were gradually buried over time by siltification, or if they were deliberately sunk after reaching the end of their natural lives. Archaeologist Mikkel Tammet, who led the excavations at Omiwanas Project, thinks that next Thursday the debris will be cleared, the water will be pumped out and all details of the wreck can be seen. According to Estonian Maritime Museum Preet Laddy, initial dendroanalyses indicated that the recently discovered wreck may date back to the late 13th or early 14th century, an estimate which is being increasingly supported as more details are unearthed, but that further analysis would be necessary to confirm the dating. According to Tammet, definitely one of the best preserved shipwrecks ever found. An unexpected shipwreck was unearthed by construction work at Lutzi 8 in Tallinn's Satama neighborhood, near the port of Tallinn. Finding the wreckage brought some controversy. Heritage conservationists have suggested that the overall goal might be to get the wreckage underground as much as possible. We will do everything we can to get these wreck out of the ground, but what's sad is that the state's contribution to preserving our common heritage is non-existent, said EHC Lutzi representative Tarmo Mill, stressing that the wreck doesn't belong to the company and the state should support its excavation. Small interesting finds were also found from the wreckage. One of the interesting finds is a mallet. It is a tool made of pigskin used by sailors to tie the ends of a rope. The wealthy Roman trading town, whose inhabitants adorned themselves with jewelry and ate from fine pottery, has been discovered half a meter below the surface of a remote field in Northamptonshire. A 10-meter-wide Roman road, domestic and industrial buildings, more than 300 coins and at least four wells, have been unearthed at the site, where 80 archaeologists have been working for the past 12 months. 
The field on the Northamptonshire-Oxfordshire border lies on the route of the HS2 rail network under construction between London and Birmingham. It is one of more than 100 archaeological sites that have been examined along the route since 2018 and among the most significant findings to date. The site near Chipping Warden, known as Blackgrounds after its dense black soil that has helped preserve the Roman remains, was used for pasture until the archaeological dig began. When the land became used for grazing, the soil effectively sealed what was beneath, said James West, of Mola Headland Infrastructure, which has managed the excavation. The presence of an archaeological site in the area has been known since the 18th century, but the findings during the dig surpassed experts' expectations. This is certainly one of the most impressive sites we have discovered while working on the HS2 scheme, said West. Uncovering such a well-preserved and large Roman road, as well as so many high-quality finds, has been extraordinary and tells us so much about the people who lived here. The site really does have the potential to transform our understanding of the Roman landscape in the region and beyond. An Iron Age village, formed of more than 30 roundhouses, stood on the site at the time of the Roman invasion in AD 43. During the period of the Roman occupation, which lasted until AD 410, the settlement expanded and became more prosperous. New stone buildings were constructed in distinct domestic, agricultural and industrial areas of the settlement. In the latter, archaeologists have uncovered evidence of workshops and kilns, where activities such as metalwork, bread-making and pottery took place. The main road which West described as a Roman dual carriageway, indicates that the town was a trading hub, with carts coming and going to load and unload goods. Most Roman roads were 4 to 5 meters wide, so this is really impressive. The nearby river Sherwell was another trading route to and from the settlement. At its height, there would have been hundreds of people living in the town. It was a very significant settlement, said West. The Romanization of the inhabitants included adapting to Roman customs, products and building techniques. Their growing affluence is indicated by the number of Roman coins and scale weights discovered, a sign of considerable commercial activity. One scale weight is decorated with the image of a female deity. It's pretty as well as functional, suggesting a high status owner, said West. Jewelry with delicate decoration, glass vessels and fine Samian pottery that was imported from Gaul have also been pulled out of the black earth. Evidence of cosmetics has been identified from traces of the mineral galena lead sulfide, which was crushed and mixed with oil for use as makeup. Half a set of shackles was unearthed, thought to suggest criminal activity or slave labor. More than 1,000 archaeologists have worked along the HS2 route between London and the West Midlands over the past three years. Last October, Roman statues of a man, woman and child were uncovered at an abandoned medieval church on the HS2 route in Stoke Manville, Buckinghamshire. They were described by the lead archaeologists at the site as utterly astounding. At St. James Garden near Euston Station in central London, more than 50,000 skeletons were exhumed from a burial ground. In Birmingham, more than 6,500 skeletons were uncovered from an 18th-century cemetery. McCourt, the lead archaeologist for HS2, said. As we near the end of our archaeological field work between London and Birmingham, we have made some unprecedented discoveries. The opportunity to carefully examine a site such as Blackgrounds and map out a long history of the site, brought to life through artifacts, building remains and roads, has enabled us to provide a more in-depth understanding of what life was like in rural South Northamptonshire in the Iron and Roman Ages. Archaeologists unearthed 3,500 year old gold jewelry in Egypt. Archaeologists discovered a collection of ornate jewelry at the Tel El Marna necropolis on the Nile River's eastern bank in modern-day Min, Egypt. Finds comprises three rings and one necklace. The necropolis was the burial ground for the city of Amarna, constructed in 1346 BC to serve as the capital city of the pharaoh Akhenaten, the tenth ruler of the late 18th dynasty. A team of Egyptian and English archaeologists discovered a young woman wrapped in textile and plant fiber, matting and buried, wearing a necklace with petal-shaped pendants, as well as three rings made of gold and soapstone, during excavations at the Amarna North Desert Cemetery. The image of the ancient Egyptian deity Besu, with his feminine counterpart Beset, was worshipped as a protector of households, particularly mothers, children, and childbirth was depicted on one of the rings. The other two are inscribed with a phrase in hieroglyphics that translates into Lady of the Two Lands, presumably referring to Egypt's lower and upper kingdoms. The young woman was placed among a small number of burial shafts, tombs, and pit graves dating to the 18th dynasty. Dr. Anna Stevens, from the Department of Archaeology at the University of Cambridge, said. Her burial is located at the Amarna North Desert Cemetery in the low desert west of the North Tombs. It includes a small number of burial shafts and tombs, as well as pit graves. She added a number of artifacts had been discovered and extensive restoration work conducted on various relics in the area. 
Since 2005, the Amarna Project has been researching the necropolis of Amarna, with ongoing excavations being supported by scientists from an archaeological mission at Tel El Amarna that has been directed by the University of Cambridge since 1977. Today, the city is home to a number of temples dedicated to Aten, as well as several royal residences that continue to attract large crowds.